In the previous video we saw Rajyavardhana was brutally killed before he could reach Kannauj and rescue his sister. After murdering Rajyavardhana, King Sasankar of Gauda Kingdom had calculated the fall of Thaneshwar and that he could apply his dominance on both Kannauj and Thaneshwar. This video will continue the events which followed after this. So, if you haven't watched the previous video, please watch that one before this, using the link provided in the description. After the death of King Rajyavardhana, the elders of the kingdom at once proclaimed Harsha as the king. For some reason which is not quite plain, Harsha was reluctant to accept the crown. Both Bana and Hyun Sang, who were contemporaries to Harsha, agree that it was only after considerable hesitation that Harsha was persuaded upon to accept the crown. It may also be that his brother, Rajyavardhana had left an heir to the kingdom, in which case Harsha could have been reluctant to sit on the throne, instead of his brother's son. As soon as Harsha had taken over the administration, he vowed that he will not rest, till he had avenged the murder of his brother, and the ill-treatment of his sister. Meanwhile, Bandi had assumed the command of the Thaneshwar army stationed near Kannauj, after the death of Rajyavardhana. Feeling angry at unable to protect his beloved cousin and king, he tried to capture Sasanka, but the Gauda king pulled back to the fortress of Kannauj. Bandhi then tried to capture Kannauj, but it was heavily fortified. After assessing the situation, he knew victory was impossible with his small army. Also, he did not receive any word from Thaneshwar regarding Rajyavardhana's successor or reinforcements. As he did not want to return to Thaneshwar without avenging his king, he moved his troops to Malwa and tried to punish the rebel vassal, who had murdered Grahavaman and started the chain of events. He started raiding and attacking the Malwa troops and cities. At Thaneshwar, once Harsha took the crown, his immediate objectives were to take Kannauj and set free his sister who was imprisoned there, and to punish Sasanka, the king of Gauda. Harsha raised his banners and gathered all his remaining troops and marched to Kannauj. On his way, he was met by an envoy of Bhaskara Vaman, the prince of Kamarupa kingdom. There was an enmity between Gaudar and Kamarupa kingdoms, due to which Bhaskara Vaman offered his alliance to Harsha. For Harsha, the proposed alliance was a welcoming one, as it made the conquest of Gaudar much easier, which was bounded on the eastern side by Kamarupa. Bhaskara seems to have been an ambitious and enlightened prince, who thoroughly appreciated the value of Harsha's friendship, and the alliance between the two continued unbroken to the very end. After concluding this welcome alliance Harsha marched on against Sasanka, when his cousin Bandi, returned from his Malwa campaign, arrived in camp with prisoners and gold. Bandi also gave him news of his sister, about whom he was most anxious. He was told that the princess, as soon as she had heard about the death of Raja Vardhana, had fled to Windhya Hills, fearing further humiliation. Harsha immediately set out to seek her, leaving Bandhi as the commander of the troops against Sasanka. With the help of the hill tribes in the locality, Harsha searched all the Windhyas and was finally able to find and rescue the princess Raja Shri, who was at the point of killing herself. Meanwhile, Bandhi successfully captured Kannauj and started the conquest of the Gauda kingdom. However, Sasanka escaped back to his kingdom before the city fell. The ministers of Kannauj offered the crown to Harsha, which he accepted. With the crowns of Thaneshwar and Kannauj and his forces occupying most of Malwa, Harsha became the most powerful king in northern India. He then joined his army and led his attack into the heart of Gauda kingdom. However, the strong resistance put up by Sasanka ensured Harsha was unable to complete his mission. After months of multiple battles, Sasanka proposed he would pay tribute to Harsha, but would have the autonomy of his kingdom. Harsha too decided to allow him to rule his state as his vassal, based on his political advisor's opinion. On hearing the ceasefire between Thaneshwar and Gauda kingdoms, the Malwa king feared Harsha would attack him. 
In order to counter this northern emperor's threat, he turned towards the southern emperor, Pulikesan II of the Chalukyang dynasty. The Chalukyang Empire had just come out of the civil war between Pulikesan and his uncle Mangal Shah. The civil war resulted in Pulikesan taking the mantle of the emperor. He had also defeated the enemies surrounding his empire. When the Malwa king swore fealty to him, Pulikesan accepted and provided him refuge. Before Harsha could react for this turn of events, Sasanka broke the peace and refused to pay tribute. Ceasefire was broken and the both kingdoms were at war again. Harsha resumed his aim to capture Goda, but Sasanka and his allies put up fierce resistance. As the war was dragging on longer than he anticipated, he feared he would lose his hold on his empire if he couldn't secure a victory soon. So, he asked Kamarupa kingdom to keep Sasanka occupied, while he sent word to the neighboring kingdoms to either accept him as the overlord or face his wrath. Few kingdoms accepted his suzerainty while others didn't. Harsha waged war and conquered the kingdoms which refused his authority by the end of 612 CE. Kingdom of Vallabhe, ruled by the Maidraka dynasty, had also refused to acknowledge his authority, which led to Harsha declaring war on its king, Dhuravasena. He marched his troops into the enemy's territory. Harsha defeated Dhruvasena in a decisive battle and then captured Vallabhe. This resulted in the Vallabhe king seeking asylum with the Gujara king, Dadda II. Dhruvasena and Dadda combined their forces and started attacking Harsha's forces, which occupied the Vallabhe kingdom. Even though Harsha won the battle, the war was still ongoing, and he wished to see it end sooner. So, he sent a proposal to Dhruvasena to have his daughter marry him. He would also allow him to return to Vallabhe and take his crown back. Dhruvasena agreed for the proposal and the war ended with the marriage between the two houses. However, Dada was suspicious that Harsha would not be so kind to him for his actions against the emperor. So, he went to Pulikesan and offered allegiance to him, who readily accepted. Harsha was already furious with Pulikesan for providing refuge to the Malwa king, who was the murderer of his brother-in-law, Grahavaman. The alliance between Dada and Pulikesan seems to be the last straw, and Harsha entered into direct conflict with the Chalukyang emperor. Pulikesan was also concerned about the rapid pace of Harsha's expansion and was using every opportunity to undermine his authority, such as accepting vassalage and providing refuge to his enemies. War now seemed inevitable between the two powerful empires. But the great Vindhyas and Narmada river stood as big obstacle for the two empires.